everything's good and appreciate your prayers and he's healthy. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Anybody y'all want to lift up in prayer this morning? Some responsible for Casey Henry. Some of more. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask, Lord, that you bless this day, bless our ministry, bless your word this morning. Open our hearts, our minds, our ears, and our eyes. We pray for discernment and understanding. We lift up Sonia and Casey and Miss Sylvia, Teresa and Marcy. Lift up Shirley Hall. We lift up Granny Claire. We lift up that newborn baby. We place him in your protection, Lord. We ask that you make him a mighty warrior in, in your kingdom. We just ask these things in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we stopped at, uh, what, Revelation 6? Hey, I heard. Six. 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 Yeah. Uh, six. So... <laughs> But you know, yeah, we stopped at six, and we talked about who's coming first, and, uh, you know, we talked about how the, uh, how Jesus destroys the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. There's only one more coming, the Lord, and, uh, <clears throat> You know, I wanted to look at Matthew 13 for a little bit further. Let's, let's, let's look at Matthew 13. Uh, we didn't get quite far enough. Uh, let's look at Matthew 13, starting at verse 24. It says, uh, Another parable... Put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then has it tares? He said unto them, The enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go gather them up? But he said, Nay, least while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. So is anybody leaving before the harvest? No. If we were to wheat, root the wheat up with the tares right now, we would root them both up. He said, And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, which are the angels, Gather ye together first the who? Tares. Tares. Bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat in my barn. Mm -hmm. All right. If you jump over to verse 37, he explains that parable. It says, <coughs> He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest, listen to this, the harvest is what? Not before that. The reapers are the what? Angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man, listen to this shall send forth his angels. Oh, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. Get that? Mm -hmm. And they shall gather out, out of his kingdom, all things that offend and them which do what? Iniquity. And, all right, and they shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. I could expound a little bit more on 41. Well, these are people that are in the kingdom. 
And Jesus is going to gather out of his kingdom all those things that offend and do iniquity. Think about what the word's saying there. Mm -hmm. So, and he says, um, look at 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Gathered every kind. Which when it was full, they drew the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. All right, that's pretty straight and clear, right? And I've had people try to tell me that he's not talking to us. He's talking to Jews. But the Bible says there is no difference in Jew or Gentile. There is no difference. Uh, we've all been baptized in the one spirit. It says in Romans 2, 28, it says, For he is not a Jew, which is, let's see, uh, one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, circumcision that is the heart and the spirit, not in a letter whose praise is of, not of men, but of God. Uh, I believe it's in Colossians. I'm giving you key. Uh, there's there's a lot. Uh, uh, Colossians two eleven, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. So he's not talking to just Jews. You know what I'm saying? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because you're going to come up against this. People are going to try to tell you. Colossians. Yeah. Or was that a Galatians? Uh, it was caught Colossians three and eleven. Yeah. Right. Well, just bear with me. I'm trying to get us going here. But I'm just trying to expound on some things because a lot of people are going to read this. And say, oh, that's not for us. Well, if it's not for us, you just throw the whole New Testament in the garbage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on. We live by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. Not some of it, all of it. And he's telling you who's leaving first. Gather first who? The terror. The so what's the church teaching now? The false church is teaching that they're leaving first. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't believe that, then you're, you see what I'm saying? Yes. But the Bible, that's going against God's word. Because he just told you who's leaving first. Let's look at Luke 17. Um, let's look at start at verse 22 I'll read it he said unto the disciples I'll read it over there Luke 17 verse 22 everybody there he said unto the disciples the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the son of man and you shall not see it and they shall say to you, See here, see or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as lightning, and you know, that goes with Amos 8, 11, and 12, you know, they'll run to and fro and still not hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. They'll hear little sermonettes, but not the power of the word of God. That's 17, 23. That's 17, that was 23. Now I'm at verse 24. For as lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven and shineth unto another part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his what? Day. Okay. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Here it is. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, the, the ark. It's the day of the Lord. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Who did the flood, flood destroy? It wasn't Noah. It was the what? Wicked. The oh, wrath of God is revealed against all unrighteousness. It says in verse 28, Likewise, also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day, you catching that? Yeah. 
that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Who did it destroy? <laughs> the ungodly. Even thus shall it be in the what? Day. When the Son of Man is revealed, in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and is stuck in the house, let him not come down and take it away. He that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remembers Lot. Remember right. Lot's wife. Yeah. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, uh, Johnny, read 34, 35, 36 in the Amplified. Listen to this. <clears throat> I tell you, on that night, when Messiah comes again, there will be two sleeping in one bed. The one, the non-believer, will be taken away in judgment, and the other, the believer, will be left. There will be two women grinding at the mill together. The one, the non-believer, will be taken away in judgment, and the other, the believer, will be left. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other will be left. And they asked him, where, Lord? He answered, where the corpse is, there the vultures will be gathered. Mm -hmm. All right, so who left? The ungodly. All right. The wicked. Let's jump over to... Uh, says eagles, and then in his book it says vultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I, I mean, I just, I just brought it out. Well, I used to read that version, and I just know it. Well, see, mm -hmm. in, in, in my King James side, it says eagles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. eagles. Really I stay with the King James version. Yeah, but I was just trying to show you who's leaving. A lot yeah. of people don't preach it like that. But above it is a vulture. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, Eagle is a vulture, also. But uh, I tried to bring it out to you to where you could see who's leaving. It's not the righteous. The unrighteous is the ones that are leaving. You know. Let's look at chapter twenty-one right quick. Uh, In Luke. Yeah. Uh, look at verse sixteen. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren. And kinfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. <laughs> Is that the truth right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that not the truth today? When you tell somebody the truth, it says by kinfolks, by both by parents and brethren, <laughs> by your own brothers and sisters, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. They're trying to come in the door some other way. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There's scripture, I don't know where, I can't remember where it's at, but it says, Jesus said, I didn't come to send peace, but, to peace, but I came to separate mother from daughter and daughter from... I'll pull that up in a second, yeah. Let's go there now, it's Matthew 10. Let's just go, jump over, hold your spot there, jump to Matthew 10. It says, uh, <clears throat> Matthew the 10th place. Yeah. It, it, uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, look at verse 34. You can read it, Johnny. 34 to 36. Yeah, 10, 34 through 36. Or 30, go all the way down to 40. 40. Listen to this. Start at 40. Start at 34 to 40. Okay. Think not that I, I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And For the I, sword's what? The word of God, okay. For I am come to set man at variance. variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be that they of his own household. Is that not the truth? Mm -hmm. When you start serving the Lord, you got trouble in your own household. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. He that, lo 
loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Pretty straight and clear, Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, it's it's all because of that where he said we are to be of of one accord, and if our household isn't of that one accord, you know, everybody believing exactly what the Bible says, then one's going to kick up and be against the others. Or right. The others against it. That's right. Yeah. Look at, let's go back to Luke 21 now. It says, I'm going to go back to verse 16. Luke. Luke 21, verse 16. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Are you catching that part? Yeah. You kind of trying to come in the door some other way, mm -hmm. and we're telling them, "Hey, that's not the way." And that, and what do they rise up and they want to put us to death? Mm -hmm. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possesses ye your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Then know that desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For, the, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there should be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. They shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun. Listen to this. Remember, after the tribulation, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Are we not seeing that now? Yeah. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, and then, and then shall they see the sign, the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draw nigh. It's pretty straight and clear, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Let's look at Mark chapter 13. In my mind. Uh, let's just let somebody start reading that verse. Uh, Chapter what? It's 13. Yeah, 13. Renee, why don't you read, uh, start at verse 3 and just read all the way to <coughs> the rest of it. Just read the chapter. Mark 13, 13. Yes, ma'am. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? So they want to know the sign. What's the sign when these things are going to happen? All right, go ahead. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hey, you know what? I want to stop you right there. They came to him privately in Matthew 24, too. And they came right here. And he said, don't worry about it. You're not going to be here. He didn't say that, did he? Nope. He said, take heed that, that what? No man no will see you. Here. Okay. And there's going to be many coming in his name saying they're Christians. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. And when ye shall, fear, <clears throat> shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. Mm -hmm. 
for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour. That speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. So is that going to happen? Should it be? I mean, is it not? I mean, it really would happen right now if you just get on the gospel gas. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. For his what? That, name's sake. Name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the name shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination, ab <clears throat> abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them be in Judea, flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of, this of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. All right, look. So the Antichrist is going to cause great affliction, right? Is that not what Jesus is saying? They want to know when these things will be, what the sign's going to be. We're going to see that. Go ahead. Keep going. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Praise the Lord. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible, even the elect. Right, whoa, 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 whoa. Let, let, read that verse again. We need to let that sink in. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonder to seduce if it were possible, even the elect. If it were, the people that are following the Lord can see through this stuff. They can see through these signs and wonders being done. <laughs> this is something you need to settle in your heart. Just because somebody's casting out a devil or doing that don't mean necessarily. I mean, I'm saying examine their fruit after they do that. Like, how they, you know, I'm saying don't, you don't want to be deceived. But this is how they're going to follow these false prophets. It's through signs and wonders. Go ahead. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun whoa. shall be... Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. in those days. All right. But in those days, after, after that tribulation, not before, after, okay. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Right, stop. Mm -hmm. And if, if you go back to verse 3... Tell us when shall, or four, tell us when these things shall be and what shall be the sign. What will be the sign? He's telling you right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. Look, but in those days after tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven shall fall, the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then... And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Hmm. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, <clears throat> from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When a branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily, I say unto you, 
that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Mm. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed. Oh, he said, but of that what? Day. Mm -hmm. That day. And that we, hour. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the time and the season. You know how we're going to know the Lord's getting ready to come? When we see the abomination of desolation set up by the Antichrist. So right now, I'm not worried about the Lord coming back. But I live my life like I'm of the day because I could die. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> to be absent from the bodies, to be what? Ooh, present, be present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. There are so many people so, that miss that part right so, there. So I'm not saying I don't, I'm not expecting Jesus to come back. But it could be another hundred years. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Go ahead. You better treat it like you like That's it. right. That's right. Go ahead. Um, 33. Yeah, I was getting sure. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a journey, far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and has commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know, <coughs> for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the cock's crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. He says to who? All. All. All right. Um, let's look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. No, 5. First Corinthians. First, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to read you something, what I was kind of talking about here. And I know I'm jumping around, but we're just building a building on this. Before we go through the book of Revelation, we need to be building on all this. Uh, I'll wait for you to get there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. There you are. All right, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the what? Day, day, day of the Lord. Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travailing upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the what? Darkness. That the that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of what? Light. And the children of the day. So we are not of the night nor of darkness. Yeah. We're of the day. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We're walking in the light. Yeah. We're, we're, you can't be walking in the darkness, walking in the light. Either you're in the light or the dark. <laughs> Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, listen to this, sleep in the what? Night. And they that be drunk are drunken in the night. Yeah. But let us who are of the day. See, we're looking for the day of the Lord. Come on. <laughs> Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God, it, you know, the hope. Hope is something you can't see. If you can see it, it wouldn't be hope. That's what the scripture says. So you're, it says we know Jesus no more after the flesh. He came in the flesh, but we don't know him no more in the flesh. He, he's a what? Spirit. Come on. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, see, here's what I'm saying, either we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. That's why I'm like living as the day, even if he came another hundred years from now, if I died, I'm going to be with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Let's jump down to 15. See that no one render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and all men. Rejoice evermore. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 19. 
quench not the spirit. 20, despise not prophesying. 21, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. This is the one that got me, 22. Abstain from what? All of all the spirits of evil. How much of it? All. No. All. You see what I'm saying? All. Yeah. That If you're going to be living of the day, all. All. All right. And, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. I wanted to bring that out. I don't know why. I just had to bring it out. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. This is uh, going to go with what we're talking about. Uh, look at verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and you read, Larry. For we know that if our earthly house is a house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we having a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed with, we shall not be found naked. Hold no. on. Let her get there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let her go ahead and read it. Go ahead. We'll wait on you. Go on over another one. Oh, there you go. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5. I want you to hear this. All right. Let's start over. Start over there. Chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of, of God, a house made not with hands, eternal in, heaven, in the heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we are... All right, whoa, whoa, whoa. If so be that we be clothed, we shall not be found naked. You're talking about the Spirit, right? Right. But, but let, me, let me read you a scripture right there. Let me read you a scripture. This is coming to my mind. Thank you, Lord. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ mm -hmm. have put mm -hmm. on Christ. Jesus. All right. <laughs> We've been clothed with Christ. Christ. We're wearing a garment that's what spotless. Come on. And if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Come on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? To get the it spot. May be oh. Okay. Let, let me read you one more. It's coming to my mind. I can back that up some more. Look here. In Ephesians. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How many people are telling you that? That's why our own household is going to come against us. Yep. That's why our kin folks and our parents are going to come against yep. us. You see what I'm saying? Because... A lot of people would rather come in some other way, but he's saying right here that we've been clothed, we shall not be found naked. If we're living and walking in the right, if we're walking in the light, we're not going to be naked. That's just our hope. That what, two letter word again, if. Yeah. The Bible says, examine yourself, prove yourself, know you're not yourself, how Jesus Christ is in you, or you're a reprobate. Come on. So go ahead and keep going on verse 4. For if. For we, for we that are in this tabernacle. tabernacle. Well, well, we're in this tabernacle. We're in this tabernacle. See, let me let me let me break something down. Uh, this is deep. This is deep. 
So we're in what? A tabernacle. Yeah. All right, so is that building the, the, the tabernacle? No. We are the tabernacle of God. We are God's temple. We are his building is what the scripture says. But it also says this right here. Thank you, Lord. Let's see. It says, uh, 12, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. When that little baby was born, God knew that baby before he was in the womb. He knew it God put his Spirit in that flesh. The parents made the flesh. You see what I'm saying? The flesh ain't God. It's what's in there that's God. That, God gave that spirit in that body and knew it before it was in the womb. Come on. Okay. That's right. But we are in this tabernacle. So I'm. what you see is not me. This is coming out of here. God's going to put this back to the dust and my spirit's going back. You see? Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the, of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, Here knowing it Here it is. that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So we're absent from Him. Ooh, we are on. ambassadors for what? Christ. Mm -hmm. While we're here, we're supposed to be ambassadors for the Lord. A representative. That's right. All right. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. No, of them. Of him. Okay. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, we must, how many of us? All oh. appear okay. before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. In his what? In his body. Mm -hmm. In his body. That's right. According to that that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Read 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Okay. Let's go back to Matthew 13. I want to show you something else. This is coming to me. Matthew 13. Look at verse 41. And then I'm going to read you something out of 1 Peter. This is, uh, this is just coming to me. All right. So it says in verse 41 of Matthew 13, Son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out, out, the, now, gather out of his kingdom. Listen to what I'm telling you. The lost is lost. This is written to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ. I can prove that to you. I think I have. But <laughs> these are people that once you're, once you, yeah, you, you are baptized, you're entered into heavenly realms, but then once the Son of Man delivers up the kingdom to his Father, he's going to gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity. That's what the scripture says right here. Out mm -hmm. of his kingdom. Now, mm -hmm. this Those is Peter. In a different direction, yeah. different way. This is just coming to me. The Lord said, go back there, and now he's giving me this. This is 1 Peter chapter 4. You can go to 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to start at 17 through 19. 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19. Go ahead and read it, Larry. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. At where? At the house of God. Not, not so. At the house of God. Okay. And if it first begins at us. At, at who? At us. Us. 
You see what I'm saying? What Us. shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Listen to verse 18. And yet you. the righteous scarcely be saved. The what? The righteous scarcely, scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Now, a lot of people are going to sit here and go, because they don't love the truth. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? This uh, don't change. That's right. This don't change. Uh, look at 2 Thessalonians and look at chapter or, ver, or chapter 2, verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Go ahead, read it. 10 through 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth. Not the what? Love of the truth. And they might be that they might that, that they might be saved. They what? Might might be, be saved. saved. Okay. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse twelve. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So God's straight and forward and clear through the word of God who's being saved and who is not. I don't care what some man told you. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Come on. What's written is written. The word is settled in heaven. The word don't change. He said, heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my word Will not. Okay. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 6. Let's get back to Revelation. I know I've spent a lot of time there, but it's just good. And now you read Revelation 6 and start at verse 12. <coughs> or start at verse 9. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 9. Uh-huh. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. People are going to give their life during the Great Tribulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? For the great day. See what I'm saying? There's nothing but the day of the Lord. We're going to prove that. You can't add to it or take away. You can't add words that are not in there. You know, you, it says, let the man of God speak the oracles of God. If he's not speaking to oracles of God, don't listen to him. If he's telling you about a trinity or a pre-tribulation rapture, any that, just get away from them. They don't know the Lord. They don't know his word. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that, and, and we hate to be like that because we love people, but I'm just trying to tell you how not to be deceived. you got to be in your word for yourself. Come on. You've got to be in it for yourself. And my job is to point you to the word, to the door, which is Jesus Christ. He is the Word of God made flesh, and He dwelt among men, and the Word of God died for you. 
Okay, is, I'll let y'all talk a minute. Is there anything that y'all want to discuss there with some of this, or y'all want to go to another no, scripture? Very clear. Or very clear. I mean, it's okay to disagree. I mean, with some of it, but I mean, I think we brought it out as clear as we could bring it out. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people that their whole ministry is on false doctrine. I mean, I would rather point you to Jesus and his word and let you see it for yourself. These are the things that I would have never known if I wouldn't have come out of the false religious arena. I, I used to tell people, well, we're not going to be here. <laughs> and my grandma would say, well, you're not reading your Bible. You know, and we would go back and forth. And finally, I said, you know what, I can't even defend my false doctrine because it's not in Scripture. So I had to start reading it for myself. That's when the Lord showed me and revealed himself to me. So, and I don't fornicate with other gods. I don't go fornication centers no more. I don't need to do that. I just, I believe the word of God and as it's written. And uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty plain and clear to me. I mean, I ask God to uh, keep me. He does. He gives me uh, the scriptures in my head. He gives them to me. He's just giving them to me. I don't know notes. He's giving them to me. It's a gift from him. It's a blessing. It's a blessing, but you've got to spend time with the Word. You sure do. All right, let's read chapter 7. Let's move on then if nobody's got anything they want to say. I mean, let's just let it uh, start speaking to us. You want to read 7, Renee? You did a good job. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt <clears throat> this earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty, and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Manasseh were Manasseh. sealed. And twelve thousand of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came ye? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are that they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. All right, stop right there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? There's people during the great tribulation that are being in the church, being slain for the word of God. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you can't get around it. Okay, go ahead, Renee. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in this temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh... And it says, no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues. So that means that he's not talking to just Jews. You know what I'm right. saying? He's talking to everybody. 
But that that's the separation of the 144,000. Mm -hmm. And then he said, as I beheld a great multitude, kindreds of mm -hmm. people and tongues. That's mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was so many of them that there's not even a number that mm -hmm. could make a number. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's I mean, not just eight of them. These tribes, <laughs> they got an appointment with God already. Right. They, I mean, they, they, they got an appointment, but. That's right. The multitude, uh, the great multitude, nobody can number. I mean. <laughs> but there are a lot of people now, now when you say that though, there are a lot of people that are, um, there's billions on the earth, right? Ain't there billions? Well, well don't we got to go back all the way to creation? Yeah. Everybody from creation to the They say that, today. I've heard this, now I don't know if it's true, I heard it, and I heard it from somebody, but they said that there's more people on the earth today living than has died in all the past. Yeah. There's more people living today than has died in all the past. That, and if you really think about that, that could be true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I That's, there's a lot of truth to that. But I mean, just how wonderful is God? He, in the, he said, yeah, he gotta, tells the angels, don't do nothing till God, until my people are marked. That's right. Don't hurt nothing. I mean, this is the wrath of God. That's right. Angels. I mean, even back in six, the four horsemen are the same spirits as these spirits right here. Right. They're the spirits of heaven. That's right. Yeah. And he, he told them, don't hurt nothing till my people are marked. Right. That's good because we want to be marked with God's righteousness. We want I mean, to be so right standing with God. <laughs> because if we are, we ain't got nothing to fear. If, if, if the earth is falling apart, we have hope. So, if we're living in righteousness, who cares? Yeah. So the people that already have passed away. All right, let's talk about that. They already marked. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter four. Let's talk about that. Let's. Uh, Start at verse 13, Larry Don. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Start at verse 13. Mm -hmm. Read it loud. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. He called us, they don't want us to be what? Ignorant. Uh, who? I mean, it's not no Brethren. Right. He don't want us to be lacking in knowledge. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Concerning them which are asleep. They're what? What are they doing? They're, They're asleep. asleep. They're asleep. Jesus said, Remember when Jesus went in there to heal the damsel? He said, she's just sleeping. On, Jesus. And they laughed at him to scorn. He said, see, when you're in Jesus, you look at things different than in the flesh. We know them people ain't laying in a hole in the ground. They're asleep in Jesus Christ. Their, their body's laying in the ground, but they're with, to be absent from the body is to be what? Ready with the Lord. All right, well, keep they, going. They, he said they're under the altar. Right. You remember they stoned Stephen and he fell or what? Asleep. Asleep. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And, and you know, if you sleep, let me put it to you like this. If you slept last night, you don't know whether you slept an hour or five hours or five minutes if you were sleeping. You don't know how long you slept. Do you get up and look? Oh, I slept three hours. I didn't know I slept three hours. You know what I mean? You really don't know how long you're sleeping. So we think, oh, boy, it's be eternity laying in the grave. Not really. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See, they don't have no what? Hope. hope. Okay. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. All right, now I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> See, if we believe that Jesus, see, so the false church can say, see, we believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. No, no. If we who are sanctified in Jesus Christ believe that, if we believe that, he said, I want y'all to be ignorant. No. 
You see how I'm telling you? All right, that, that's how he's saying it. God's going to bring him, bring them with him. Because mm -hmm. they're already with him. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. What's it say? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Because they're what? They're already with him. To be absent from the bodies, to be what? Right. And God Lord is a Lord. what? Spirit. And we know the the body the the body's going to return to the dust and the spirit to the Lord who gave it. So this is not made for eternity. This is not. This gets sick. It wants to rebel against God. It's under a sin curse still. I got to keep it in subjection by the word of God. See, my my thoughts will start rising. Oh, well, I can do that. Or I, but that's not how God said it. He said, "Hey, it's written." It's written. It's written. It's written. It's written. In a tree. It says we've seen as he is, and we know that we'll be like him. That's right. That's right. Either we're like him or we're not. Oh, we're going to get to that verse next. Go ahead, Larry Don. <laughs> Thank you, John. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a what? With a shout. Now it's a secret rapture. With a shout. Now it's a secret rapture. With a shout. Okay. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, hold on right there. It says, Then which are up. Uh, then which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them. Well, it says that the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. So is, is he talking about the ungodly? Well, we're going to read on in Revelation that no man was able to enter into the temple until a certain thing had happened. Right. I believe they're just asleep in Jesus Christ in the presence of the Lord until the coming of the Lord is what I believe. Now, I mean, I, now that's my now that is something that I guess I believe. I believe they're just asleep in Jesus Christ, waiting. Um, so, I, I the mean, godly and the godly. I don't believe they're in a. Let me study that for answer that question to you, because okay. I want you to see it the way I see it. Uh, you, you're saying. It says, this is say, we shall not prevent them which are asleep, because they're already with the Lord. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. Uh, the dead in Christ <coughs> will rise first. Yeah, because they're already with him. Yeah. He, he's going to come back in clouds, clouds of people. Clouds of people. Clouds right, represents right, believe, clouds of people. Yeah, yeah. Not the cloud. I mean, he's coming on a cloud, but with clouds the, of people. They say the way he he ascended, the angels told him why you look into the heavens because because he a, a cloud received him. That's Acts chapter one. Yeah, a cloud received him. It says, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven." So there's no secret rapture. He's coming just like he left. You're right. Uh, there's another one, though. I mean, because he said that, that a, a cloud received him, the angels told him why he looked up there because a cloud received Jesus. Right. So that was people, too? No, I mean, he did go away, but when it says clouds. But it said he'll come back the same as he left. Yeah, in Revelation, it's on a cloud with clouds of people. Oh, okay, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much got it. Yeah, it's going to be the righteous coming with him. Righteousness is coming to the earth to judge the earth. You see what I'm saying? Righteousness is coming, and no, those that have died in Jesus Christ because we'll live him. here a thousand years. Yeah, I mean, and reign with him. Right. 
He's going to set his kingdom up on earth. And where yeah. God is, there's no unrighteousness. Yeah. Until he looses the Antichrist. That's what the devil. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah, you're right. You're right on that. It says, though, in 1 John chapter 3. Uh, yeah, go to 1 John chapter 3. There's something else you said. I'll wait on Larry Don to come in and back. But, uh, Oh, yeah, it's Where's good. It's hard to be, ain't it? Uh, well, First John chapter 3. Let me turn him there. So he'll be there. All right, Larry, Don, come over here. We're going to look at First John chapter 3. Over here. Mm -hmm. Starting at verse 1 mm -hmm. through. Just read 1 through 10. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. See, hold on. See, God was in His Son. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Now we are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Now we are the sons of God. He's the firstborn among many brethren. So what God did in Jesus, He wants to do in us. Jesus said, greater works you're going to do because mm -hmm. I go back to the Father. All right, go ahead. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because he knew, it because, knew him not. There you go. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, All right. we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Stop right there. All right, so when God's coming back, Either we're lacking, mm -hmm. spotless, without blemish, mm -hmm. without wrinkle, or we're not. Now, read forward. Three. Yep. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Mm -hmm. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. They what? Sinneth not. What do they do? Sinneth not. Okay. Whoever abideth in him sinneth not. Now, let me just stop you. Let me read y'all something. Y'all stay where you're at. Let me show you how to stop sin. Let me show you something. And, and I'm not talking about making mistakes. I'm talking about... Abiding in the Word of God. Sin, yeah. I'm talking about things that lead to death. Listen to what it says. This is Scripture. Now you are clean through the Word which I've spoken of you. First of all, you got to hear the Word because faith cometh by hearing by hearing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If, my, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. If the word of God's not in here, you're not going to be abiding in it. It's not nothing. You have to do it. But like to to quit doing certain things, you have to have the word of God in you to cause it to go away, to be destroyed. To, Come on. Like Come we'll on. talk about doing all these things, but really are we doing it? But <laughs> you got to get to that point where, man, I got to have the Lord help. He's got to be the one to do it, take the desires by the word of God. Keep going now. Six, read six through ten. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. And whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. But he that's born of God has seen the Ooh, Father. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Keep going. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. 
For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay, but the seed, he said, whoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed. What's the seed? Mm -hmm. The what? We're God. supposed to be slinging seed, right? The word of God, the parable yeah. of the sower. Some fell here, some fell there. Yes, then sir. the devil yes. comes and snatch it. That's what that, if you ain't got the word of God in here, you can't stop sinning. Come on. You can't. Come on. But you mean we're serving a God that died for us that can't make us stop sinning? You mean, you mean, you see what I'm saying? Is God God or not? Come on. <laughs> he can make us stop doing it. I've served a God that can do anything. With men, nothing's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Come on. And I'm talking about sins that lead to death. I'm talking about like fornication, adultery, lasciviousness. You know, on and on. You can get rid of them desires, you know, like uh, when you're living, when you're not living for the Lord, your flesh has the best of you. So like. What were we talking about? You, talking about them great big sins we can see. see yeah. Little bitty ones we yeah, but I mean, like, you'll be talking to people you're not supposed to be talking to. You'll be running around with women you're not supposed to. You'll be running around with men you're not supposed to be running with. You can't stop doing all that and having them desires to do that till you get in the Word of God. Come on. You can't be clean on the inside. you got to be clean on the inside. God's going to look in your heart and see. Uh, you got to have eyes to see that stuff and ears to. Uh, there's a scripture, and I don't know where it is, but it's coming to me. When, when Jesus... He's going to come to reveal the secrets of man's hearts. Conscience. The secrets of his of men's hearts. He's going to reveal them secrets of people's hearts. So don't have no secrets. <laughs> you may be fooling me, but you ain't fooling God. Mm -hmm. You know. You may not. You know. It ain't each other. We got to fear. It's the, Lord. it's the Lord. The fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Come on. Oh, that's it. I, I'm going to give you that scripture. It's come to me now. Let me give you that scripture. Because a lot of people say, oh, no, that ain't in the Bible. Well, yeah, it is, too. It's in the Bible. So you think, Charles, that, I mean, if you've got a guilty conscience, he knows you've got a guilty conscience. Well, sure he does. I mean. But he don't want you to have a guilty conscience. Right. If you go before him with a guilty conscience, you're denying what he did for you. No, not necessarily. You can be broken and contrite in spirit, knowing you're guilty, knowing you need God's favor. If you have a guilty conscience, that's the only way the Lord will nudge you to do that. Right. 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 Yeah, you're trying to humble yourself before the Lord, but I see what you're saying. You can be guilty and never come to the Lord, but if you're coming to God with a guilty conscience, knowing you need His help, He'll free you from that guilty right. conscience. Right. Yes. It says... Let us hear, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13, 14. Y'all don't have to turn there, but it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Remember, we're going to be judged what we've done, good or bad in our body. Every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He's going to judge every secret thing. Thing. So, if I'm running around on my wife and she don't know it, the Lord knows it. You know what I'm saying? I may be getting away with it right now, but when the angels come, I'm not. I'm guilty. I can't be doing that. I can't be living in the dark, living in the light. I mean, I just had to bring that out. Oh, God, I got Please, yes. Yes. See, but... Well, I mean, let me just ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So you was, you was cheating on your wife, but you repented and asked God to forgive you. Then you're, you're free. Yeah, you should have so, so when you appear before him. Now, does my wife got to stay with me? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. but, but yes, you're. But when you stand before him, 
He won't even remember that he's dead. Right. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about, though. Mm -hmm. Let me put it in this perspective. Go to Matthew 7. I believe it's Matthew 7. Is it 7? Because uh, if he remembers our sins, okay, we're six. just fine. We all do. Chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at, let's just start at 27. I'll read it. Ye have heard. This is God talking. Matthew 5, verse 27. Let me just bring out the seed. The Holy Ghost is good. He's going to bring the word for what I told you. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Mm. And if, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not the whole body should be cast into hell. Mm. Now that's a parable. Of what he's trying to say. And if thy right hand offend me, mm -hmm. he said, Cut it off, cast it from me, for it is profitable for thee that one of the members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Now, he don't mean literally cut your hand off. Mm -hmm. He's saying, Cut that trash out of your life that's causing you to see things. Cut it out. Keep your hand away from it. So, Keep how do I stop looking at a woman with lust? I sit Man, there like this, and I don't put myself, I abstain from all appearance of evil. And I sit there with my head down, and I don't lust after them. And God always makes a way of what? Escape. Escape, so he don't want me sinning. He's always giving me a way to escape that sin. So just don't sin. Choose to serve God rather than sin. You just got to start choosing who you're going to Holy Spirit, not that Jezebel Obey. Spirit. <laughs> this is the keys to the kingdom. To me, he's kind of... Give it to me by look at them like your daughter or your sister. And, and that, and then, that yeah. helped me a lot. And then it helps me a lot. There's beautiful women. It's nothing wrong with looking at beautiful right. women right. or beautiful men. There's nothing wrong with saying that's a good looking woman or that's a good looking guy. There's not nothing wrong with that. The problem is when you start meditating on it and what you're going to do to them Next if you day. could. You know what I'm saying? That's not living for the Lord. Nope. That's not doing God's will. So if some woman came to me and said, lie with me, and I knew I could get away with it like Joseph. Did we not read the book of, or yeah. the story of Joseph? Yeah. He said, how could I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Come on. I can't do that. I'm serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. As much as my flesh would entice me to do it because your flesh is wicked. It's gonna you see what I'm saying? Be married to one woman. <laughs> Be with one woman. One. One, 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 one. That's it. You, yeah. I'm saying if you can't control yourself, it's better to marry than to burn. Be married to one woman, period. And and serve that one woman as, as you would Christ. And we fail a lot of times at doing that. But I'm not living in the dark. I'm living in the light with one woman, period. You know, God's going to know the secrets of my heart. So I can't have any secrets. Amen. All right, let's look at uh, chapter 8. Renee, you read chapter 8 again. You, you're a good reader, and then we'll shut it down here after chapter 8. We ain't got to get in no hurry to go through this. Revelation. Revelation. Yeah. You're the best reader we got. I know we flip through a lot of scriptures, but that's how we get to know our Bible and we get to know our Lord. Mm -hmm. By flipping through the books. I mean. And when he had opened the servant's seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. 
And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. The, the, the prayers of the saints are before the throne. Come on. You see, God hears the prayers of the what? Righteous. The face of the Lord is against them that do what? Evil. Okay. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. All right, now I want to say, uh, read six right quick. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Okay. Now, I want to say something. Chapter 6 overlaid the whole book of Revelation. Now we're going to start breaking it down with the trumpets. And we're going to see how the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and until, we, until you get over here to chapter 9, how the six angels sounded, and then at the seventh one, the Lord came. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we just came through the seals. Yeah. We're at the seventh seal. And that's when the angels were released with yeah. the seven trumpets. All right, go ahead. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Now this is the wrath of God, right? Yes. Okay. And the second angel sounded. And and, oh, well, and I want to say something. The Lord hadn't came back yet. Let me say something this. Did Moses not go through the wrath of God when he crossed the Red Sea? Was not the wrath of God really being poured? Remember, even when they were on the, the seashore, God was holding Pharaoh back by lightning and thunders, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Huh? Was, did Moses didn't go anywhere yet? No, they, they went through the sea, and at the end of the crossing, God washed away everything. Did no one not go through the wrath of God? Was he touched? Not Was he all. ever touched? Not at all. Now listen to this. All right, go ahead. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Did not uh, God give Moses commands to put his staff in the water and change it to blood and Put curses of frogs on Pharaoh and yes, lies. We, we read all these things. Yes. Did they go in? It was light and Goshen, but dark in Egypt. They were the children of the light. They were the children of the dark. That day hadn't came yet, though, to separate it all. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. All right, mm -hmm. So we just got to the fourth angel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read chapter 9. So, so the next three trumpets are woe trumpets to the earth. Right. Go yeah. ahead. All right. Uh, we're going to read chapter 9. I think we'll stop at 9, but we're going to the fifth angel. And the Lord still hasn't came back yet right here. Go ahead. And the fifth angel sounded, and I, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the icy, I'm sorry, the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Listen to verse 4, y'all. Here it is. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, 
neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, is there people here that have God's seal in their foreheads? Because evidently they, it does, because he's saying, don't touch the ones that have the seal of God in their foreheads. Yeah, only he, touch he, the ones that don't. He did that back in the, in the, the first seal, yeah. I mean in the seventh. Seal. This is a breakdown, though. Yeah. We're breaking yeah. Revelation down section by section. Yeah. But these angels, let me just stop you right there. Let me read you something in 2 Thessalonians. I'm going to back this up with more scripture. Because Paul ain't going to contradict Revelation. He said, look, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven... He hadn't been revealed yet with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, not sinners, yeah. to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among them is believed in that day. All right. But it says, and he was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth nor any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. <clears throat> in Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter 6, it talks about sure. your right hand and your forehead. A lot of people already have the mark of the beast in their hand and in their forehead because they're yielding themselves to who they're serving. You see what I'm saying? But we're of the Lord. So we're doing the work with our right hand for the Lord and we're meditating on the, day, on the law day and night on this on his precepts. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. But see over here in 8, 7, it says that the angel came down and he, and third part of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burn up. Uh -huh. But then over here in 9, it says it told him, don't hurt nothing. No, no, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So. So what? So he, uh, 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 what was left, he's talking about. Don't what, hurt what's left. What's left. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead, Ray. Right? Read 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was at the, as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And I think somewhere in there it says that they'll seek death and shall not find it. Right. Like they, yeah, they'll want to die and can't die. It's the next sentence. Oh, yeah, go ahead. There it is. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and mm. shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Well, that's bad, ain't it? You ever been drunk and had the dry heaves? I think that's a good representation so, of that. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. So you think that's where the men run into the caves and back and 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 bake the rocks and fall up? I imagine so. You know. Well, we read that in chapter yeah. six. Yeah. 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 It's just breaking it down yeah. for us. I've right. been popped by a scorpion, and I don't know if that's happened to me. Right. Ever. It's bad. All you right. What? Stone, not by a scorpion, yeah. but I had to, I had to get my britches. <laughs> it didn't take you long, sir. I got out of them real quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead, verse 7. And the shapes of locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the, men, as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Uh, uh, Apollyon. All right, let me, let me tell you this right here. God has many names. Does the devil have many names? A couple of them, yeah. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So, what, so the, like the Hispanics would call Jesus what? Jesus. Jesus. But in the Greek tongue, he's called? Josh. 
Hey, so Christo, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So don't be deceived on the people trying to tell you the name ain't Jesus. There's a lot of people that are praying they won't say the name Jesus. Yeah. They'll try to, they'll try, like when Luke was writing to the Greeks, he didn't, he didn't write to them in Hebrew. He wrote to them in Greek. <laughs> they could understand what his name was. You see where I'm going with this? Don't be deceived by these all this stuff out here that you're hearing from people now. All right, because I want to remove that name because that name is power in the name. Mm -hmm. All right. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more than hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. I stop. You know, we can see on TV, all the four angels are being loosed at the Euphrates River. No, they're not, because the third part of the grass ain't been burned up yet. Right? <laughs> Am I right? So, I right. mean, okay. I mean, so, so, these things that rise up out of the earth and say they look like locusts, this is this is just illustration. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, mean I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I really don't know that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just illustration, but I was just going to ask. If the, I mean, I ain't found yet what they really are because they come up for battle. I mean, it, out of the earth. Yeah. I mean, well, it's. But, I guess the devil's going to release his angels first on us. I yeah. don't know. You know, all I'm saying though is the great river Euphrates, like you said, all this had happened, but we see on TV all the four angels are being loose because the Euphrates River's drying up. No, not yet, because <laughs> that hadn't happened what you're talking about yet. Yeah. We're going in biblical order here. Right. As it's written. Okay, go ahead, Renee. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the, in, the, in the vision and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we'll stop there. Uh, but the message is what? Repent. I mean, it, it hasn't never changed. Never That's changed. Never changes. All right, Johnny, lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the the explanations of it, Father, we, we just thank that you thank you for revealing it to us as we study. Father, we thank you for all you do. Father, we thank you for the new life that's came into the world. And we thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.